Dear Aka Aka Saka, wait, no, it's weird to write it to the author. Dear CEO of Anime, I know you didn't ask, but do you know that Kaguya Sama Love is War is my favorite show? Yes, I'm a weep. As you know, Love is War season 3 is ranked third on the anime list of, well, my anime list. And now the movie is coming out. It's time to show you my unsolicited dedication and clearly unrequited love for this show. So now I'm listing 7 storytelling lessons I've learned from Kaguya Sama and Love is War. Ha! Yes, another list! Because we don't have enough lists on YouTube. What are stakes? Not that. It means the amount of money you could lose in gambling games such as investing in NFTs. In stories, this word has evolved to mean what the characters could lose if they fail. Popular examples of stakes are the world, the character's life or love life or work life or social life. Basically, add life after any word. The stakes in Love is War are objectively inconsequential. To many viewers, it may even be better if Kaguya and Miyuki lose in this game of love, as they are actively sabotaging their love life to win the war. But why does this still work? Because Kaguya and Miyuki care about the war, losing would be devastating. This is why trivial matters could be dramatized without feeling out of place. Because to the characters, those everyday situations are life or death. Asking for a phone number is as painful as apologizing on the internet. The character's subjective view of the stakes is all that matters. Who cares about the world ending if the characters don't? No matter how objectively trivial the stakes seem, the audience will get invested as long as the characters care. Comedy is based on ridiculousness. Now here's the problem. Ridiculousness can often undercut the drama, causing the audience not to treat the plot seriously. Only if you are bad at writing. Because Love is War balances this perfectly by giving a reason for ridiculous actions. Overthinking in love? Everyone has done that. Especially when we were young. Kaguya's jealousy monologues, they stem from her desire to be loved, something her father never gave her. Miyuki's efforts to hide his flaws come from his insecurities about his status and another reason. Ishigami's lack of faith in himself? I wonder where that came from. Chika. Is the narcissist and the daughter of a politician. That explains a lot, right? These reasons for seemingly ridiculous actions are the backbone that maintains the drama in the show. This is how the show transitions from comedy to tragedy, easily and seamlessly. If the core of comedy is ridiculousness, then the core of tragedy is the lack of control. The less control the characters have over their lives or actions, the more tragic they are. The lack of control can lead to ridiculous actions. To understand the lack of control is how a comedic character can turn tragic in an instant. Comedy and tragedy are not complete opposites. Although, you still have to separate these two elements far enough from each other to avoid tonal confusion. Love is War is episodic, right? Most episodes are not one, but three separate stories. Everything appears to return to the status quo at the end of each episode, but the status quo is a lie, an illusion. Like Thomas Howard, 3rd Duke of Norfolk, once said, the show is having its episodic cake and eating it too. There is side character progression, obviously, but what about the main couple? Watching the show episode by episode, it may seem like the two Sundarays are taking one step forward and two steps back. Also, remember the annoying moments when they almost made huge strides in their relationship, but didn't? Yeah, those moments help maintain the lie that their relationship will remain stagnant forever. If we watch the show as a whole, it's clear that their feelings towards each other deepen over time. The show is just tricking us into thinking their relationship isn't progressing, because that is the same lie that Kaguya and Yuki tell themselves. The illusion of status quo plays with audience expectations to make the payoffs of the show feel satisfying and hard-earned. After all, you can't be disappointed if you have no expectations. That's why I have no expectations for myself. <laughs> Speaking of expectations, the show knows how to utilize reoccurrence to enhance its storytelling. For example, Chika training Miyuki. From volleyball to singing to dancing to predating a fish, yes anime watchers, this manga panel actually exists, to rapping to balloon art. Each time Chika trains Miyuki, she becomes more and more distressed, and every training episode is different. Oh, Chika is good at music, this should not be that bad. <coughs> Kaguya is involved. Whatever this is, Miyuki teaches Chika, what? 
The training part is not focused on because the important part is the moment between Kaguya and Miyuki. These episodes rely on audience expectations and knowledge to work, building on a similar previous episode. So yes, this show is not really episodic. There are also reoccurring motifs that act as inside jokes, rewarding the audience for paying attention. Laser Death Beam is a nerd way of showing jealousy. How cute symbolizes Miyuki's insecurities and fear of Kaguya looking down on him due to his status. Even though in reality, this is what usually happens. Reoccurrence can be effective if used properly because it keeps the audience invested by building on information they already know. But too much reoccurrence can make the story feel repetitive and boring. The attention to detail in this show is amazing, from the test score to the side characters, all to make the fictional world feel real through glimpses into the lives of others. Yes, there is world building in a rom-com. Some details become easter eggs that reward the audience for paying attention, like Karen ship trash Kino and Erika Miso Coats. I didn't make it up, these are the official names. The duo appeared many times throughout the show long before their official introduction in season 3. And how can I forget about Maki? The audience spent the first two seasons questioning, who the hell was this stalker, even though the answer was there from the start. When Maki is finally introduced, the audience is rewarded with the answer to their question. Next time you write a story, don't forget about the details. This is just a long way to tell you to remember your world building. They can make your world feel real, reward the audience for paying attention, and give value to rewatchers. Narration Wait a minute, the narration in Love is War seems redundant. Honestly, at least 80% of the narration can be deleted and the audience will still get the story. But the narration still works. Why? Random facts from the narrator add a layer of richness to the story. Thanks to Love is War, now I know to cosplay the next time I travel to France, instead of repeatedly yelling baguettes and french fries on the streets and getting weird stares. Don't ask. Most importantly, the narrator is like a caster of a sports match. He announces the battle results and emphasizes the stakes, all to dramatize the war between Kaguya and Yuki. The show knows when to use narration. The narrator is silent in serious dramatic parts, like the Ishigami backstory, letting the audience feel the story for themselves. Can you imagine if there was narration though? He made a final plea. Will it work? Will anyone believe him? Oof. Ishigami has taken a fat L or something, I don't know. Yeah, you get the idea. Only use narration if it enriches the story and matches the tone. One of the defining features of the show is the use of illustrations. The illustrations are used to dramatize the thought process of the characters, keep the narration interesting, visualize abstract thoughts with metaphors, make pop culture references, incorporate visual gags to enhance the comedy. Also, let Adobe charge you 20 pounds per month. Wait, that's the illustrator. Illustrations embody the show not tell golden rule of storytelling. They can help the audience understand the story better if used correctly. Here's the thing, not all stories can benefit from them. Shocker, right? Who would have thought that you couldn't just slap something into anything and hope it works? Maybe that's why I couldn't run my car on water. Illustrations always have the risk of yanking the audience out of the story. Ask yourself what your story is about. Love is War is about two teenagers ridiculously trying not to admit their love. This show is heavy on character thoughts and dramatizes the ordinary, so the illustrations sync up perfectly with the story flow. If you get what your story is about, you can customize the way you tell your story. Love is War takes advantage of its story and the animation format by utilizing illustrations. This show is truly peak fiction. Everything I've just said is to convey how great Love is War is. Watch the show if you haven't done so. Who am I kidding? You are the CEO of anime. Of course you've watched it. Isn't it crazy that I'm sending this letter right when the movie comes out? It's not like I calculated it, so you will read this at a specific time. I'm not that insane. Anyway, adapt the entire manga into anime, and also the entire spin-off, and the novel, and the official doujin, and all the unofficial doujins on the internet. You don't have to adapt the NSFW ones. I'm nice like that. If you don't do that, I'll come to your house and make you. I know where you live. What we got. Thanks for reading. P.S. Like and subscribe.
Comment, I am a big dumb idiot if you've never watched Love is War. Why am I putting this in a letter? It's not like this a YouTube video.